And these are facilities that are meant to basically take care of patients who require uh, advanced uh, levels of care. There are two main groups um, of patients who qualify to be admitted in critical care. Uh, the first group is what we call emergency admissions. Uh, these are patients who are admitted after um, what I would call acute decompensation. Uh, I would give a good example, road traffic accidents who have sustained severe injuries. The other group is what we call elective admissions, and these are patients who are electively booked to be in critical care. And these usually are admitted for monitoring. These are patients you want to keep a keen eye on their heart rates, their breathing, their brain function, their feeding. It has been built as per the JCI standards, the commission that uh, undertakes health uh, care certification in the US. We are able to do both continuous kidney dialysis and uh, the conventional dialysis, the type of dialysis you find being done as outpatients. We are able to do small and intermediate surgeries, including interventions. And here I'm talking about endoscopy, which we are able to perform here without having to move a patient out. The same kind of setting you see here is what you'd get in the US. In Sub-Saharan Africa, this would be probably the best setter in my view. We have no curtains. All the doors are sliding, you don't touch. You'll notice that all our equipments are not on the floor, they are all um, positioned above the floor. All these are interventions that are being used worldwide to enhance patient safety and care. This is going to be all inclusive. We'll have a pharmacy within, we have a laboratory within. All this is meant to enhance patient's care in terms of how timely the patient gets interventions, which we know impacts greatly on outcomes. The isolation unit is a specific, or there are three specific rooms within this hospital, and these are meant for what we call high-risk uh, patients. It has separate entrances, it has uh, very well designated uh, you know, dressing uh, areas you know, for the staff and the relatives who come to see these patients. It has very well designated contamination areas such that whatever is in there can be contained there without fear of it spreading out. We have a reception where um, all such matters regarding you know, what time to see the patient, what are the restrictions in regard to seeing your patient are you know, dealt with. So we have a school of nursing that trains critical care nurses. So we have very well trained critical care nurses available full time. If you come at any one point, you'll find at least three doctors on the floor. We have family conference provisions where there are very regular updates which are documented between the patient's relatives and the doctors. You find at times one patient is being taken care of by five doctors. So we bring all the five doctors into a meeting and all the questions that the relatives may have are answered in detail. The perception uh, among most of you know, Kenyans and the public in general is that once you land in critical care, it means you are close to death, and that is not true. The majority of the patients who come into specific facilities within a hospital leave the hospital better. We have had numerous visits from patients who have been admitted in the Nairobi hospital, and they all come back to say thank you because of the care they got. We receive a lot of patients from the neighboring countries. 
uh, because they know of the standards of critical care here. If you are critical before you really think about going away, you need to think about what's available locally. It has been set to a standard where the experience and the level of care is world class. This is the place where any critical patient has hope to recover.